Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to our Sea Dream from Stamperia mini album project. This is a design project for Scrap and Create and you can get all your supplies there. I'll have it linked down below. And I will also have a link to the cutting guide down below. Um, this is our collection. Let me move it to the side. Okay, so last time we put together three of our four base page um, units. Uh, this was page one. We haven't fully matted, but we've done a lot of them. Page one, page two. Um, yes, this is three. And this is page four. And page four is the one we're going to start with, or at least semi. We're just going to do a little bit and come back to it. And then five and six. So let me set those aside as well. Okay, so the only thing we're going to do right now with page four is mat it. It's a plain page. We are going to add some other stuff, um, but for now I just want to get the mat down. And I chose this mat. We are going to add quite a bit of stuff on top of it, so I do recommend that you, if you're not going to choose the same mat I did, or if you're using a different paper collection, choose something fairly plain, um, you know, like a little all over pattern or something. What's that? Um, just given that we're going to add the other things on top. But for now, I'm just going to use this one, which is uh, the back of this one that had the whale on it. So I'll do that. And glue, I need my glue. little project on the other side of the room. I left my glue over there. Sure, I'm putting this right side up. I want this dark at the bottom. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It could be fine the other way as well, but. page four for now. We're going to get back to it. You will have seen it in the walkthrough, so you know what's coming. Okay, so let me put that there. If you haven't seen the walkthrough, um, there'll be a playlist for all the videos in this project. Um, and I always name my playlists are almost always by the paper collection, so you'll be able to find it that way. I have, uh, so here's our base. I finished that. Now, this page is one you've probably seen if you've watch my channel for any length of time. You've probably seen it before because I do this page a lot in my albums. I just really like it. Um, so I make it a lot. All right, what page is this? I think this is an extra piece. I don't think I need that. Or maybe I do, hang on. Oh yes, I do. That's my flap. Hang on. Is that what that is? Yes, okay. I, didn't, I did measure it. Uh, five and a half by eight. All these measurements are going to be in the cutting guide. Um, so I started to say you've seen this before. Um, the most recently, I think I did it in um, uh, what was it? Sir and Lady Vagabond. Um, it's a flap that has two stacked pockets on the front, and then I change up what's in the inside. In this case, it's going to be a pocket with a flap. So let me go ahead and score. So this is the flap and it is five and a half by eight. Score one long side at a half inch. And 
let's see. I'm just looking at all my stuff to see what I have. Okay. All right, so this is one of the pockets. It is six by four. And I'm gonna put the um, six inch side across the top and score it at half and five and a half and then rotate and score at half. And then this is six by five. So same thing, put the six inch side across the top half and five and a half, rotate and score to half. And then this is the flap for the inside. It is four by eight, so put the four inch side across the top, score to half. And then this is the pocket. It is nine by two and three quarters. Score the long side at a half. And the two short sides at a half. I do have a larger scoreboard. I just didn't feel like getting it out. Okay, there's that. All right, so let me get all that taped up. I've got everything taped. And I wanted to mention, because I did mention this album is good for beginners, and it is, um, but if you are a beginner, don't forget to burnish your tape after you put it down. It will make a world of difference um, in getting the backing off the tape, and it also will just make your album stay together better. It won't, you know, the tape won't lift. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is fold this tab and burnish it. So that I can test fit these pockets in case I need to make any adjustments. I think that's good. Okay. So this is the larger pocket. get any little bits sticking up I'll either if it's too much I'll trim it off but usually I can just sort of press it in with my bone folder okay so that's the larger pocket this is going to be the smaller one and this is going to sit on top of that one let's go ahead and check that for fit looks good Just lifting up the tape on the two side tabs just for a little bit and attaching the bottom piece to those and then I'll put the back of the tape. Turn it over and give it a good burnish. I'm going to attach this pocket to the bottom of this pocket. So I'm just pulling back a little bit of the tape at one corner, and I'm just going to line up my two corners. I'm picking it up so I can see it. use that as a pivot point to line it up to the other side. And make sure it's lined up along the side. Did that tear? I think that tore a little bit. It did. Go. Okay, get that 
that out. Make sure that's lined up there. And there. Okay. Ooh, I didn't put that on too straight. I think it'll be fine though. It's not sticking out the sides. So. Okay, so here is our um, flap, and this is just going to be attached to the bottom of the flap. Okay, and the tab is on the right. Okay. So we're going to repeat the process. Peel back a little bit of the sides, just like that. Okay. And I'm just going to do it upside down. Peel back a little of the corner. This is exactly like what we just did. Okay. And line it up at the bottom and across and make sure the sides look good. They do. So then, the next step, you know, this is going to go here, right? So we want a pocket here. But this tab has to fold over. So we don't want to put the pocket tight, tight against that. I'll show you. So let's go ahead and fold it and burnish the pocket. It's just a thin pocket. going to go here and what I'm going to do is just place it about a sixteenth of an inch or so in from that fold line because if you put it right up against it you're going to have a hard time with that flap. double checking that's where I want it you could put it out here but I don't I don't like to put pockets there and the reason is when you if the pocket was up here when you open it everything will fall out even though you do have a, a flap to hold it um, I'd still rather um, have it on this side Double checking to make sure I'm leaving the same space on each end. This flap here and I'm gonna round these corners I was thinking of doing like a shape 
then I think I just want to do the rounded corners. My tool cart was on the other side of the room. All right, so I'm doing quarter inch because that's what we did on those other flaps that we've already rounded. going to go on the opposite side. This is going to be attached to the right side of the base. Now is a fine time to be checking it for fit. Probably should have done that first, huh? But it's fine. Again, I've just lined up one corner. Use that as a pivot. And there we go. Now, it's a tricky magnet situation. I think what I'm going to do, this is quite large. There isn't a lot of overhang here. For me to put a magnet there. So I think I'm going to put a magnet here and here to hold this closed and then we may use some sort of physical um, either a tuck or a seam binding or something to hold the actual flap closed. All right, let me grab a magnet. And I say magnet, but I'm going to do two and two because it's big. Right. And I'm putting them on the outside of the flap um, rather than the inside of the flap. I'm wondering, maybe I should put them on the inside of the flat. No, I'm going to put them on the outside of the flat. They won't be particularly noticeable. They're very thin. One there. And one there. Okay, go 
going to leave that in. Like I said, we'll figure out something physical for this because there just is not really enough overhang for a magnet there. Okay, there's that. Seven. Uh, page eight, I haven't cut yet, but we're just going to do a vertical belly band. Vertical belly band. Um, I originally was going to include one on another page and decided I didn't want it there, so I'm going to put it here. And I'm just deciding how wide I want it to be. Of course, you can make a belly band as wide as you like. Sometimes I like to do really wide ones um, and then attach things to them. I think. I don't think I'm going to go really wide with this one. I think two inches. So I need a piece nine by two. I'll be right back. Let me cut that. Nine by two. And just want to score this on the two short sides. not need to trim the corners, but we do want to test it for a fit. Looks good. clean my glass napkin. Glue on it. I love this mat. I know I tell you that every time, but I do. I think because I was, well, I mean, I really like it because it's great, but also because I was working on that grubby green mat for so long. Okay, there, there, okay. And just deciding if I want to measure this. Sure. First off, I want to make sure it fits. Okay. All right, so this is six inches wide, right? So this needs to be at two to be centered. All right, let me just semi-measure semi it by putting it on my board. Actually, let me take it from this side. My nails are a hot mess. I was going to give them a break from polish because I've been wearing it too much and they're getting soft. But then I put polish on one side just to check a color, and of course it immediately started shipping, so I'll be throwing that one out. Okay, two inches will be centered. And I'm not being like super fussy about this here, people. Okay, so right about there. And When I do a vertical belly band like this, I usually do want it centered. However, if it's a horizontal belly band, I very rarely will put it right in the middle. I usually like to put it a little lower. Okay, there we go. Page seven and page eight. What time is it? Okay. Um, let me get some mats for this and I will, and yeah, I think that's, well, we have some other places we need mats, too. Um, so let me pick out whatever mats I think I need. Let me see what I need. Hang on. I know I needed one here, right? Yeah, we need one there. We need all of that. This one, I need the white mats for inside these. I didn't do those. And this page, I think is done. Okay, so this page is done. This page, we need that one large one. We need lots for that. We'll do that later. I need white ones for here. Oh, I need all three. No, this is just two. This is a pocket. So here and here, which I, I tried to pick out mats and I wasn't finding stuff I liked, so I may just go with white. We'll see. And then all the mats for here. All right, I'll be back in a bit. 
with the mats and we'll keep going. I've gone ahead, I've cut the mats, I've put most of them down, I think. I might put them all down. Um, so let me go ahead and show you, and I have some others I want to show you um, as well, but let's just take a quick look. This is done. These I'm going to do in the white, which I haven't cut yet. And then this is what I put here, if I hadn't already. I just want to make sure you see everything. This is for page four, which we're going to do next. And then that's that. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm calling these by their pages, but I think I'm going to actually put these two side by side. Since they look the same, I think that'll look nice in the book. So whatever I'm referring to as page four may not end up being page four. Um, and then this is page one, and this is what I've got here. And that's that one. And this is what I put here and here and there. And this doesn't have a closure. Um, I was thinking I might do something mechanical, but now that it's matted, it's actually stained closed pretty well so we'll see and then this is what I put here and I really like this little beluga peeking out from behind the belly band okay so that is that now as you know because you will have seen the walkthrough hopefully you've seen the walkthrough I'm doing a smaller version at the same time so let me show you what I have because I want to show you how to mat this little thing here um, I haven't done the same everything is not identical um, you know this one's the same but that's probably about it and then this is going to be the equivalent of page four in this book and because of scale i have not made everything identical uh, remember i said i was going to do um those pages side by side but see on this one i made this flap shorter i just thought it looked better oh i haven't added that okay so i'll do that um so these are not going to end up side by side and I'm going to show you that. That's probably why I haven't done that yet. Okay, so that's that. Here's how I did this one. And I showed you that, I think, maybe. Okay. All right, so that's those. Let me show you this one. I have to do that one that I just realized I hadn't done yet. But this one has the small flaps. And I have only done, on this book, one flap. Because I felt like two or you know one each well on the on the bigger book it opens and then it opens again and this one it just opens once and it's going to open like that and i'm going to explain this inside part to you but let me go ahead and get these outer ones down so they're out of the way and then i'll show you Actually, I said we're going to do page four or whatever page it ends up with next, but I may go ahead and just put these in the book and do that in the book. As a matter of fact, I think that's probably what I will do. And what did I do? Here it is. Okay, so let me do that one. And then this one is going to go here. And even though this is a small book, um, I did use pieces from the 12 by 12 for the mats. I used some 8 by 8, some 12 by 12. I mixed it up the same way I did on the bigger book. I didn't put that down very straight, did I? Okay, that's better. Okay, now let me show you. I still have to cut a little bit because I wanted you to see how to cut this. Um, so what I did is this is the 12 by 12, okay? And I made my first cut just below the beluga's tail because I wanted to make sure I didn't cut into it. So I've cut all the way across the 12 inches of the paper. Then I went up five and an eighth because that's how tall this these pages, the pages are six. Um, so I went up, no, five and seven eighths. So I went up five and seven eighths, 
and cut. So now I had a piece 12 by 5 and 7 eighths. Okay. And then I cut from this side a piece 3 and 3 eighths for this mat. Now it's too long, but that's okay. Just cut it like that. Okay. Cut, just leave the full height and cut that width. Then I made a cut just past, you know, about an eighth of an inch past the beluga's nose and mouth, you know, so I don't cut that. Cut that, and then I cut this way, um, four, uh, excuse me, three and seven eighths, okay? And that was just a tiny bit of gap, but that's fine because they're going to be a, a little gap anyway, okay? If you understand what I mean. You're going to be cutting a little off this side, but it won't matter. Then... I cut, so now I have this edge, so I cut from this side, so I turned it around, put it in my cutter and cut here, um, again, three and three eighths, right? Yeah, three and three eighths. And again, it's too tall for where it's going. Okay. Everybody clear. So what I'm gonna do Okay, so that's how it is, right? So I'm going to take this down so that it's the right height, and I'm going to cut it off on the bottom, okay? So that I have the height that I need, which is five and an eighth. So I'm going to put it in my cutter and cut it here at the bottom, five and an eighth. I'm going to do the opposite with this one because I need to cut off the top part because we're trying to maintain this image, right? So this one, I'm going to cut the same height, but I'm going to cut it from the top. So this one, I'm going to cut off the bottom. This one, I'm going to cut off the top. And I'm going to do them one at a time so I don't mess it up. All right, so five and an eighth. Let me do that. Okay. And I've already inked the other edges. I'm just going to ink that edge. So that's going to go there. Okay. And then I'm going to cut this one five and an eighth, but I'm going to cut it off the bottom. Okay, and you could do this the same way on the big one, but um, that's just how I decided to do it on this one. Okay, so that's how I'm getting my continuous pattern all the way across. Okay, and let me ink that one. All right, let's go ahead and put those down. Just occurred to me to check to make sure I didn't put this right side up, huh? Should have done that first. Okay.
okay you want to try to make sure your text goes you know matches up across okay there we go these are little um knitting needle whoops sorry about that too much rough play between my kitties okay um what was i saying oh these these are knitting needle point protectors if you're wondering what i'm using to close my glue bottles okay there's that so i just need oh this pocket so i just need a pocket liner and a piece for that but i can do that off camera okay so that's that okay so we have all of the small pages mostly done i just have a little bit to do and the large ones we have to do this page here that has the it was a magnet did that um, this is where we're going to put the little envelopes. I may do something different on the smaller album. I don't know how much room I'm going to have for that, but we'll see. Because it is there's not a lot of real estate. Um, but, so that's that. Apparently all the magnets. Okay. So I think I'm going to stop there uh, and make my covers. Try and decide what I want to do next. Yeah. I'm going to make the covers and the hinges and get the pages into the book, books, and then we'll go back to that page. Um, so what I'm going to do, because I'm going to use rice paper on my covers, I am making my covers white, even though my pages, I use the navy. I'm going to use white. I'll use navy on the inside of the book, um, anywhere, you know, on the hinge. Um, I don't think I'm going to do liner I might do a liner I don't know um, but you'll see in the next video what I've decided and I'll let you know um, but you can go ahead and make your covers in the white if you're going to use rice paper if you're not going to use the rice paper you can go ahead and use whatever the dark paper is that you're already using or whatever you're using um, but I'm going to use white um, to make my covers and the measurements are in your cutting guide so I guess that is it. This is a design project for Scrap and Create. You can go ahead and get your supplies there. Um, there is a link to the cutting guide that I just referenced down below. There is a link um, if you'd like to, not a, yeah, just <laughs> start again. There is a link down below and a discount code if you wish to purchase one of these glass mats from Glassport Studio. Um, this is not a paid post. Um, I was not gifted this mat. I purchased it at full price, but they very kindly gave me a discount code if you are interested in purchasing one. So I have that down below. And I guess that is it. I will see you next time, and we will keep going with these books. Have a great day. Bye-bye.